Okay, Doctor, we're happy to have you in our studios, uh, Magnus Packel GVA Studios. Thank you very much. I'm delighted to be here. Yeah, thank you for coming. So today we want to talk about this age of digital abundance. You know, we were at your seminar about a week or so ago, Correct. and a wonderful show you put up there thank you. Uh, at Bayes University. So thank we were you. privileged to be there. Mm -hmm. And so we want to look at this the same thing you were talking about, that this so-called age of digital abundance, and try to connect it with Africa. Um, you're already digital Africa, so, so is yeah. Africa. To connect it with Africa and Nigeria, and to say that, are we keen into this so-called digital abundance enough for it to help us with our economic progress? Is it? Do you see signs that we are taking we are part of it, you know, as the rest of the world in this? this the, the whatever comes out, the good things that are supposed to be coming out of this so-called digital abundance that you people think we have. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, um, first of all, I think that we've started making some effort. Okay. The, the effort we've made so far is not good enough. I say that we've started making some effort because, for example, take Nigeria. Um, ICT, which is still all to do with the digital, contributes almost 13%. One, of, three? Yeah. Okay. Of the GDP yeah. of our country. Mm. And this is despite the fact that it started making contributions only just recently. Yeah. What that means is that if more properly harnessed, mm. ICT stands to make a lot more contributions Absolutely. to the economy of um, Nigeria. Absolutely. But having said that, given where most of the world are, mm. what most of the what the rest of the world are doing, mm. there's still a lot we need to do. There's still a lot we need to do. Now, first of all, I like to make the point that uh, we've had three industrial revolutions in okay. the past okay. that Africa was not part of. Okay. There was a first industrial revolution that was led by steam, okay. a second industrial revolution that was led largely by electricity, okay. a third industrial revolution that was led largely by computers, by personal computers. Okay. Now, we did not play a major role in those three revolutions. Now, a fourth industrial revolution is in the offing. This one now is driven more by exponential technologies. Mm. These exponential technologies, just one of them, on the last count, there are at least 36 of these exponential technologies. Just one of them has so much power and is so much capable mm. of disrupting the world the way we... But what is exponential? When you say exponential technology, what does that mean? Okay, to you, a know, regular you can have a technology yeah. that grows both in terms of the growth of that particular technology and in terms of what it is bringing about, in terms of its results, okay. that grows arithmetically. Mm. One, two, three, four. Mm. You can rely and predict on how the growth is going to occur. Yeah. But something that grows one, four, mm -hmm. 16, okay. 30 something, yeah. 100 and something, a thousand something, that's, that's exponential. Yeah. And a lot of this technology, that's how they are growing yeah. you know, today. They are growing exponentially. Yeah. And I'm saying that we don't just have one of those type of technologies now mm. are missed. Are know? they are they growing by themselves or people are growing them? Because if they're growing by themselves, we should be afraid because they can take over. <laughs> I mean, what, what's making them to be exponential? I think, yes, it's people yeah. that are developing them, okay. making a lot of effort, you know, to make sure that um, they come up. Yes. The thing with a lot of this type of technology is that somebody is, let's say, somewhere in New York, yeah. beavering away 
working on this technology to refine it, to make it get better. But some other people are also working in England, in China, and yeah. so many other okay. people. And each person is relying on the work that was done by somebody from elsewhere mm -hmm. and will not have to go back to start from you know, uh, basic principles mm -hmm. you know, again. So as a result of that, this technology has just grown so rapidly. Yeah. You know, I, I like you mentioned that ICT now represents about 13% of GDP, you, you mentioned. I recall when I was in government, when I started in government here in Nigeria, that it was like very little, yeah. like 2-3%. Yeah. And now it's 13%. What is that? What, what, what constitutes the 13%? What, what, what do we see that we say, ah, that's part of that 13% of GDP? Well... It's as a result of the fact that um, a lot of universities okay. have produced a lot of people now that are getting into the area of um, ICT. Mm. It's as a result of the fact that um, the amount of ICT uh, technologies that are being imported mm. by the country have blossomed yeah. you know, so much. Um, in those days, the PC base for the country, yeah. all the hardware solutions, their base was so little, mm -hmm. but today they blossomed. Okay. You know, similarly, the software that we are using, the networking systems that we are using, okay. if you count the amount that we are now making use of yeah. in the country, yeah. it's quadrupled. Absolutely. As compared, you know, to the past. Absolutely. And it's not just the ones you see in the public sector or the ones you see, let's say, in banks, yeah. but you also see them in the oil sector, okay. in the health sector, in yeah. the agricultural sector, in practically all the, you know, sectors. And not only are they um, making contributions yeah. by themselves, they are also causing all kinds of contributions within each of those sectoral, you know, areas of um, the economy. So yeah. when you look at that, there are ways you can then, you know, see that these are the specific contributions that are being made by. Uh, I, I see, ICT. for example, I see it in the banking sector. In fact, I was telling people in the United States that it looks like the, the consumers, you know, the the customers of banks in, say, Nigeria are using more ICT than typical customers in the U.S. In terms of mobile money, money transfer, people dial something on their phone and money is transferred. And, and people are using it quite a bit. So that is that part of, the, is that part correct, of it? Correct. Yeah. I've also always felt, yeah. having been somebody that worked you yeah. know, within the banking system here yeah. in Nigeria, I've always felt that... Um, with regards to banking, we are even more developed than so many countries, let's Absolutely. say, in Europe. Absolutely, yes. Um, I remember in those days, we would finish all our processes towards uh, doing an LC. Yeah. And then we would send the whole thing to our correspondent bank, let's say, in the UK. Yeah. Something that took us 48 hours. Yeah. And it's taking them more than two weeks. And we're like, what's going on? We know that if it were here, Similarly, within a day or two, we will complete that process. But there, yeah. it's taking them uh, it is, uh, yeah. as a result yeah. of the fact that even some of the technologies we are using here, they are not even using yeah. it. You know, there. No, I've seen that. Yeah. Okay, so then, how do we pass it that against the poverty situation? Because people argue about this so-called theory of abundance and scarcity. We see Africans leaving Africa in large numbers you know, making perilous trips across the Sahara, across the Mediterranean, into Europe, because they are fleeing the poverty of Africa. Yeah. So, if there's, if we're making these um, strides in communications, growing it from two, three percent to thirteen percent, how come we also see on the other side that kind of poverty that is chasing people away? Yeah. But how do you, how do you? Yeah. How do you um, reconcile that situation? Yeah, I agree with you. It is seemingly something that um, is irreconcilable. Yeah. But having said that, the truth is that um, there's a lot of poverty in Africa, in yeah. most of the African um, countries. And um, they also 
the, the thing also is that um, a lot of our people also have a, a mistaken view of how things are yeah. in other parts of the world, especially in Europe yeah. and a place like the U.S. They believe that when they go there, all their problems are solved. But bottom line, if you take our country, Nigeria, yeah. or any other African country, try to look at the number of hospitals there were, let's say in the 1960s, and the number of hospitals there are today, mm. you will see there are a lot more. The number of schools there but, were... But, that, but that's in, normal. That shouldn't, shouldn't that be the case? There should be more because there are more people. Apart from there being more yeah. you know, people, even in per capita terms, okay. there are more okay. you know, today okay. in almost <clears throat> everything you can you know, think of. Okay. Yeah. But having said that, people also expect more. That's the thing. Yes. Because the aspiration is a lot higher than the attainment. Mm. When you have the aspiration a lot higher and the, the uh, attainment a lot lower, you have this curve. Yeah. And that curve is the curve of frustration. There are a lot of people in this society that are frustrated because yeah. what they are aspiring you know, to do, to gain, to get, is a lot higher than what they are getting. Why, why, so why can't they that. get what they are aspiring to get, in your opinion? Yeah.